Hi, Bridge. <laughs> I mean, hi, kids. Ah, shoot, I gave it away. Well, anyways, hello, kiddies. I don't have a story for you today, but we're still going to have double the fun. Hybrids and polymers. It's like a two for one deal. And who doesn't love a freebie? A while back, I gave you the skinny on aluminum electrolytic capacitors. If you remember, we talked about how aluminum electrolytics have a liquid electrolyte, while polymers have a solid electrolyte. Both have their perks, but we'll talk about those another time. But if you ever wanted the benefits of aluminum and polymer capacitors in one shiny package, it's time to meet the hybrid. So what are those benefits exactly? How do you choose between a hybrid and a polymer? Doc, could you please tell me why polymers are solids? I'm gonna get there! Hold on to your hats! A conductive polymer, get this, is a polymer material that conducts electricity. This stuff starts out as a liquid mon monomer. Fast forward through our polymerization process and wham, bam, you got a solid polymer electrolyte. This is the same polymer that goes inside a hybrid along with aluminum electrolytic liquid electrolyte. Yeah, I get paid for every tongue twister I say. Hybrids have both solid and liquid electrolytes, while other types of capacitors have just one or the other. Why do you think they're called hybrids? It's not to say that other electrolytic capacitors are so-so, but hybrids and polymers are helpful when you need a little bit more heft. Both have low ESRs at high frequencies, which allows them to withstand higher ripple currents and stay cool doing it. And I'm all about being cool. Both hybrids and polymers also offer stability over temperature, which is a little different. When things heat up, their capacitance stays close to the 25 degrees C initial value. In other words, they stay true to themselves. Stability over frequency? check. Wide operating frequency range? How does up to 500 kilohertz sound? Hybrids and polymers have both, but hybrids have some special doodads of their own. They offer consistent self-healing, just like aluminum electrolytics. Moving on, hybrids cost less than polymers. I'm just trying to put more money in your wallet. This way you can buy more hybrids. Nobody likes a wet blanket. By choosing a hybrid capacitor, you can sidestep higher leakage currents that you may have encountered with regular polymers. Like aluminum electrolytics, hybrids tell one-third the leakage of polymer capacitors. That gives you a better chance of keeping everything nice and dry. Where I come from, you can cut the humidity in the air with a plastic knife. Whoosh! But life goes on, and that includes the life of a capacitor. Good thing hybrids have a higher humidity resistance compared to polymers. Moisture in a capacitor body is a big no-no. Too much buildup and the capacitor short circuits. That's worse than walking through the office with a giant sweat stain. There's another key difference between hybrids and polymers. Now listen carefully. Hybrids life expectancy doubles for every 10 degrees C decrease. Polymer's life expectancy increases 10 times for every 20 degrees C decrease. Regardless, a hybrid offers longer life than an aluminum. More time for you to love the little squirt. This is what I'm getting at. Hybrids and polymers mean high reliability. Nichicon's polymers and hybrids are used in automotive and industrial markets because they don't mess around. Like my pops always said, if you can't stand the heat, you probably don't have a Nichicon polymer or hybrid capacitor. Well, we're about out of time today, kids, but it's been a gas. And hey, if you ever have a question about capacitors, send it my way. My buddies and I will work on it faster than you can say circuit board. Until next time, may your days be groovy and your capacitors even groovier. And if they're not, you know who to call.